For those who may not uh, know me, I'm Father Larry Blake. Um, I, uh, my current uh, assignment is at the University of St. Thomas as Director of Campus Ministry. Uh, I was uh, received into the faith along with my family um, 31 years ago this spring here uh, in this parish, and uh, it's always a fond memory when I return, um, even, though, uh, uh, even though there's been a major remodeling since uh, I was here 30 years ago. The readings for today, once again, help us to reflect on what it means to answer the call of God. It's a common misunderstanding, I think, for many of us, that we would think that the experience of God's call would always lead to some victory, some triumph in our life. Most instances in the scriptures suggest otherwise. Many of the prophets, even Moses, were reluctant and hesitant to accept God's call. Likewise, Jonah, whose uh, story is told in the first reading today. All of these people felt that they were not up to the task, that God was asking them to do something they could not do, that they could not believe they had the energy or the wisdom or the strength to do. And sometimes, as in the case of Jonah, they regretted that the call of God had come in the first place. Now, Jonah, you know his story well. He was invested with a message uh, to deliver to the city of Nineveh, a great city uh, that took him three days to traverse from one end to the other, proclaiming uh, and calling the people to repentance, proclaiming the coming judgment of God and calling to people to repentance. And yet, uh, when Jonah got to the other side of the city after making this uh, great announcement, this uh, fearful uh, prediction of God's uh, judgment upon them in 40 days, all of a sudden, the whole city uh, repented, including their king. And so we read in, in that uh, book of Jonah that, uh, that God repented, that God changed his mind regarding the judgment he planned to visit upon them. He did not execute the threat. And what's interesting, if you read the lines beyond the 10 uh, verses in today's reading, you realize that Jonah was not the least bit happy with God's decision. He says at one point, I might as well be dead as to go on living. You see, he was kind of looking forward to uh, judgment coming down upon the people of Nineveh. And Jonah perhaps admits that he should have known better when he accepted the call in the first place. In fact, he tried to dodge it by getting on a ship, and then the ship was tossed back and forth in a storm, and Jonah realized that this was a, a sign of, of God's uh, judgment toward him. He begged the sailors to throw him overboard uh, and to quell the storm, which they gladly did. And then, as you know, he ended up in the belly of a whale. And time to, it gave him time to think about this call that God had sent to him. So Nineveh was saved uh, in spite of Jonah's protest. God asks Jonah at one point, am I not to feel sorry for Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left to say nothing about the animals. Well, this vengeful image of God that we often see, especially as we look at Jonah's attitude toward the people of Nineveh, uh, reflects nothing of the compassionate call of Jesus and all that he demonstrated in his preaching 
of the coming of the kingdom of God. In the gospel for today that the deacon proclaimed for us, we hear about the calling of the very first disciples, Simon, his brother Andrew, the two brothers of Zebedee, James, and John. And they drop their nets and follow immediately upon meeting the Christ. James and John do the same, leaving not only their boats and their nets, but their father as well as they begin to follow Jesus. And what's the message in that hasty uh, attempt to answer the call of God? Perhaps for us it's that responding to God's call in our lives means letting go of some of the conventions, some of the tasks, some of the attachments that we hold so dearly and follow Jesus. Some of you know of my uh, military service uh, over the course of 14 years with the Air Force as a chaplain. And, and uh, I remember when I first felt that call, uh, it was shortly after one of our priests here had died while serving our country. And um, it was such a strong call. It was, it was like, well, who's going to take his place? Who's going to step up and, and do this uh, now, that he, uh, now that he has passed on? I remember going to Archbishop Flynn at the time and asking him what he thought, and, and he said that, uh, well, he would give me his blessing if I believed that this was God's call. And then actually, after reporting for training, I thought, I think maybe I made a mistake. Uh, after all, I was in some, among some of the students that I trained with, I was almost 20 years older than they were, uh, and we were all participating in this officer training together. But God certainly uh, blessed that work, and I'm ever grateful for that opportunity. Sometimes you, we tend to think that uh, Answering the call of God means that it's all uh, smooth sailing, uh, no rough waters, no storms to try to navigate, that the way is free and clear, and yet so often the opposite is the case. We, answering the call of Jesus in our lives means that we also enter into further storms and new difficulties, new hazards, new troubles. Perhaps the words of St. Paul are helpful in this regard as we think about his, his letter to the Corinthians. He advises us to think in terms of our lives as a radical detachment from the world. He says that business and family, feelings, all of the good things that God bestows in us, these are all wonderful, and for them we give thanks, but they are not God himself. All of the blessings that we receive in life, we need to remember, come from God alone. These are gifts, and he is the giver that we worship. All of us, all the people of God, are sojourners, pilgrims on this journey throughout life, as day after day we seek to answer God's call in, in uh, a myriad number of ways, working with our families, working in the community, the work we do here in the parish, all of them seeking to give honor and glory to God. And like Jonah, we're well advised to not let our uh, immediate expectations of how things might go or how they might work out uh, to cloud the vision. In the end, the final word is the good news. As Jesus announced it in Galilee, this is the time of fulfillment. The reign of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. <laughs>